The best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain. Welcome, welcome to Unhinged with the Door Dork, where door hardware nerds on my screens are right here and here. Get together to knock and to slam on different door fails. We learn, we laugh, and sometimes we even cry because of some of these installs are pretty terrible. Joey, I think I might have a crier one for you today. So grab your tissues, get ready. But most importantly, we jump on the show to have a little bit of fun, but learn a little bit while we have some fun. Today, Today, we do have a very special guest, Mr. Joey Mayers. Why don't you hop on and say hello and tell us a little bit about who you are? Yeah, sounds good. My name is Joey Mayers. I'm the field sales engineer with Osaboy, working with small business customers. I've only been here about six months, but working with everybody has been great. It's been an awesome experience, so it makes you feel like you've been here a lot longer. Before Osaboy, I uh, owned my own lock and security company for about 10 years and sold it last May. Took a few months off and then came to work here. Before that, I spent about 14 years as a career firefighter. So my two careers have always put me around codes, doors, hardware, anything in this field. So I guess I'm here for the long run. You're locked into the industry, aren't you? No pun intended, right? <laughs> <laughs> Six months with Os Abloy. So you're still drinking from the fire hose. The proverbial fire hose. <laughs> I know all about that thing. I stay full of water. Yeah. Well, welcome. We're happy and excited to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. And I'm excited to see your background come into play with some of these doors. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks for having um, me. Of course. Yeah. And why don't you share a little fun fact about yourself to the audience, to the other nerds out there that are curious. So uh, fun fact, not sure that it's that fun, but I was born on New Year's Day. Growing up, I started noticing that every time someone saw my birthday, they would look up and go, oh, awesome. You were born on New Year's Day. And, you know, I bet your parents were really upset that they missed that tax break, huh? And, you know, totally didn't get that as a kid, but I understand completely now how beneficial that could have been just a few hours earlier. But yeah, that's the fun fact for now. Yeah, you probably didn't get it as a kid. You're like, what? Tax break? But now that you have kids yourself, you're like, oh man, I feel bad. And to me, it's not really that exciting because you know we just had Christmas so the gifts are never good they're like oh you just had all these good gifts a week ago but you know then I look my oldest daughter was born in the end of June and I'm like yeah you know what nobody ever says oh you were born June 28th how awesome is it 110 degrees and 100 percent humidity that day <laughs> I, I, I guess maybe New Year's Day is fun yeah so you get to celebrate your birthday with the new year <laughs> were you the first baby born in the hospital that year no so my mom always gets upset about this. And it's funny, you'll understand. So we have a military base 20 minutes from here, Cherry Point. And at that time, Cherry Point had their own hospital. And there was a baby born there that beat me to the punch. And my mom Whereas to this day, that should not have counted. That was that was not the, the hospital in, in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be mad. You know, mom messed up. She didn't get a tax break, didn't get all the free gifts for the first baby of the year. She should have pushed harder, I guess. Uh, <laughs> She spent the next 18 years pushing me hard. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she did plenty. I have no place to talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you, Joey. Mia, why don't you hop on and say hello and tell a little fun fact as well. Do you have fun fact? I do. So where Joey lives, um, my husband was stationed down in that area, not at the Air Force Base, but at the Marine Corps Base, because I am married to a veteran Marine. He wasn't a veteran then, but <laughs> so familiar with the area. It's wonderful. And we want to plan a vacation back down there because the beaches are, I don't know if anybody's been down, if you haven't visited visited that area, even like Wilmington. Um, the beaches are really nice down there. So isn't the water like super warm because it's it, coming up from the Florida Gulf Coast, right? Or I don't know. Yeah. It depends on the time of the year. I mean, so last week was like in the 80s and my neighbor said, hey, we're going to the beach after school. Do you want to go? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm working. But she's like, well, how about the kids? So my daughters go with her. And I'm like, I'm not sending y'all with a bathing suit. You're not getting in that water. And uh, sure enough, they got in the water and was sending pictures. They said it was cold, but it doesn't take long with our warm summers to warm it up and it's really nice that's big in the area where I specifically live has two rivers that come together and it's well known in this area. Lots of people live on the river. So boating, fishing, all that is big here. I love the water. I couldn't live somewhere that I didn't have it at this point. Yeah. My husband used to walk on the beach on base and we have like jars of shark's teeth that he would find. Really? So, yeah. Well, cool. Fun, fun fact. That's awesome. Yeah. I guess my fun fact today is probably a little bit more related to Joey's, but it's more about my birth story, I guess. So 
I was born in the United States, but I can say I was actually made in Japan. <laughs> My parents lived in Japan for 10 years up until right about they had me and they wanted to have me in the States. So they moved back just in time. But my two older sisters actually were born in Japan. So they have the privilege of saying like, hey, I'm part Japanese, I guess. <laughs> and not me. I've heard that quite a bit being around a military base. Lots and lots of kids are conceived in Okinawa. <laughs> I was thinking maybe I should get a tattoo or something made in Japan. I'm just kidding. <laughs> May violate your by American Act. I was yeah. just gonna say that. <laughs> you can't work here anymore. It all comes around. It all comes around. Okay, so for those who don't know how Unhinge works, I will share my screen of three different door fells and we'll react, we'll knock it, we'll slam it, we'll give it any kind of helpful tips or tricks so people can learn a little bit, and then we'll give it a knocking score. One being not too knocking bad, it's not terrible. Ten being very knocking bad. Let's get Joey in there to write him up to the AHJ, get his fire marshal buddies in there to help us address these concerns. This should be easy. It's easy to knock something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Let's go. Wait for it. Yeah. We're waiting. We're waiting. Come on. <laughs> oh, well, at least it's not one that I did. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, right out the gate, we got the ropes in front of the exit doors. Every time I see some kind of signage that's like laminated or taped on a door, I know I'm going to have to take a picture of some sort because the best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain, right? Oh, yeah. Beyond the rope, too. Somebody uh, placed their ladder in a great spot and left it. So if, so you, if you don't trip over the rope, you're definitely going to trip over the ladder on the way out. Yeah, right. That ladder is like right up against the uh, and like while I was at this forestry center actually here in Oregon while I was sitting there there's like this beautiful zen garden right out there and so I understand why they have the signs on the door because people probably like go out there to go view the zen garden but the right. guy was up there for I don't know like more than an hour or so if something did happen and like someone came crashing out like He'd be falling. There's like OSHA violations. There's all sorts of issues with this one. <laughs> you know, and then my OCD kicks in a little bit on the left door. It's like we got maybe at one point a bright brass cake plate. And then we go into the Duranati competitors bar and then up to maybe an antique brass door closer. Yeah, that's just tacky, I guess you'd say. You got you got to match the you gotta match the finishes. Come on. Right. Cosmetic fail. But, yeah, but yeah. Not, not the end of the world, just some of us get too detailed. The right door got a little bit better cosmetic. Yeah, and what's funny is they're right next to each other. It's hard to see in this picture, but one's on like this side and the other's on this side of the forestry section. So maybe the hardware was matching, but then the doors are different and I don't know. Yeah, and the, the exit sign over the double doors isn't centered. That's driving me crazy. <laughs> I thought someone might call that out. I don't know. I'd probably let that slide because it's still yeah, the it's door. there. That would just be me like I would have been the guy that would have installed it because I didn't think about it but then I step back to admire my work and I'm like oh let's start over move it over patch the wall oh well, yeah and on this side it works out to where the door is centered in the panels right where right. if they need to do that over here I understand why they did that over there but still I think it's better to be like so purposefully off though than had they like centered it in either of those panels it would have looked like an even worse mistake <laughs> like it would have looked like a mistake rather than on purpose right <laughs> even though it's so far off it's on purpose it's like it's a <laughs> contrast but hey i've seen worse i mean you know if you remove the ropes move the ladder i mean people can get out they used you know commercial grade hardware there's no dead bolts on the doors no slide bolts or anything that would keep someone from getting out in a hurry we just put the rope there did they yeah. have an another door where you could go visit the zen garden or do you think they just had this cordon off because somebody was like working outside no it's roped off all the time they don't really want you going out there because people can't get back in so there's a large window in between these doors and so that's where people are supposed to view the zen garden from but i could understand why they had to like rope this off because people kept on going out there and then like now they're stuck and like they're knocking on the door and i can see it being a pain so it just hit me what the ropes are for so you know how when you got someone running track they got to hop over those things <laughs> this hurdle. is so when there's an emergency and you're running you, you got to hop over them it's an emergency hurdle 
<laughs> it slows down the flow. Yeah. Or maybe it's like a cheap alarm when the rope's knocked over and one of the workers walked by. They know somebody went out that door and they weren't supposed to. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Not too knocking bad, but if you were to give it a knocking score, Joey, what would you say? I'm going to say a five because it's easily a fixable situation. And like I said, they didn't add anything up there. They weren't supposed to. Looking at the panic bars, I mean, it actually looks straight. A fairly clean job. So we can remedy this real quick. So I'll say a five. Past videos, I haven't seen anybody give a one or two, or at least I didn't see that. So I don't want to be the first. Yeah, not too bad, but bad enough. Like they're still breaking code, but it's easily resolved, right? How about you? Yeah, I agree. It's a five, but it's a temporary, like it's a movable thing in retraining to fix it. So it's not like anything needs to be modified on the door. I think the door as it exists, is compliant. It's user error. I like that. Retrain. <laughs> that retrain. I would agree with both of you. I would say it's, it's a five. It's an easy fix. And my issue with it is like the design of the setup. Like why would you set something so beautiful outside that people want to go to, but then not allow access back in? Like how could we fix this in a way where we're still code compliant, we're still secure, but people can go see what they want to see because they paid money to see it, right? Like <laughs> Benji, next time you go, just give them a bag of zip ties and tell them they just dog down that door. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. Yeah, here's your dogging. I mean, they do have the good dog in there. Yeah, it's on both of the vertical rides as well. Oh, okay. That's still not as fun. Then you wouldn't be able to talk about it. Yeah, I will note, and I meant to mention this, you can see that it's a nice tight gap here, but then you're seeing some light peeking through here. And that's your envelope of the building. This is not sustainable. This is letting in and out energy, especially as cold Oregon winters. You might run into some issues there. At least you're paying for it and the environment is paying for it. So that's right. You need to send that picture to Amy and have her take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's jump into the next one. Are you ready? If you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged, you can leave a note below or you can email me at mia at doorhardwarenerds.com.